Welcome, I'm Janelle Kolaski, a career mindset coach and actor. And I'm Amanda Duvall, a self-authenticity and prosperity life coach and actor as well. And we're your co-host of Mindset Artistry YouTube channel, where we teach you the art of discovering and using your mindset to, to build, build a career, career and life you desire. Welcome, welcome. So today we're going to dive right on into shining your light while walking your truth, regardless of what others think about you. And I have this really good quote that, so I'll start with that. So authenticity requires vulnerability, transparency, integrity, but to be completely yourself allows others to feel safe to be themselves too. And I thought that was such a great transition to go into just shining your light because when you shine your light and being authentically yourself, you allow space for others to do the same because there's no sense of competition. There's a sense of acceptability. There's a sense of acknowledgement and appreciation for everybody for who they are and what they bring to the world in general. So I know, Nelly, you really want to talk about this because that is a big part of your journey. So let's dive in. Tell me about shining your light. Yeah, I mean, it's fascinating because even today I went to get acupuncture. I've been having a lot of back issues. And the acupuncture, acupuncturist pointed out to me this one here in Mexico and also the one back in New York City said the same thing. They're like, oh, you're having back issues because of your fear. And a lot of it is around being myself. And um, it's just for me, I was, and I'm working through it, but I was always afraid to shine my light because... I notice if it activates something in someone else and they start to feel some type of way, I want to get along with people, you know, so I change myself so they're comfortable. Um, but that's not doing a service to anyone, for them or for me, it's not good at all. Right. I agree with you. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you have this awareness and you're getting it not only from yourself, because you already know this, but to hear it affirmed by other people it's kind of like the universe or whoever you believe in, the higher power, whatever you believe, the divinely, or if you don't believe in anything at all, totally acceptable, you know, totally fine, all you do you. Um, it's a great reminder and a confirmation what you need to work on. You know, you can always look for clues in the world for what you need to work internally because it, 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 um, it will either activate something within you. So I love that you feel so comfortable to be honest about being yourself in the world, especially with being a creative and having all these aspirations and goals, how that it can affect how you move through each of those goals and through life and interact. So tell me, what is the negative aspect of not being yourself and walking into your, in your truth and shining your light, being a creative? Yeah, um, I, I talk a lot of, uh, to the creatives that I work with about how it's so important to be authentic because as an artist and everyone is important, but artists, you know, we kind of channel the human experience for others to see different perspectives and um, hopefully invoking empathy in others. And we're all meant to reach different people. So it's like a scarcity mindset, like, oh, I have to be like somebody else so I can achieve my dream. So I, I oh, I... I have to be like them because they're doing what I want. Um, but only you can do what you're meant to do and what's for them is meant for them. And so um, it's very damaging to you, to your creative journey and to the people that you're meant to reach if you're not yourself. And it ain't easy. I'm not <laughs> saying it's easy. It's something, the biggest thing that I struggle with because yeah, I'm goofy and I'm outgoing and everything, but I'm also very sensitive to people and their energy and their feelings and I take, I tend to take care of other people in, in ways that I'm not supposed to. You know, it's kind mm. of like, um, and that's not helping them, it's not helping me, and it's certainly not helping me creatively because it takes so much energy away from you when you do um, put your own light out. It's that, is, that is so true. Yeah, I, you know, it takes a lot of strength and, again, vulnerability to walk in your truth wherever wherever you do because there there is this like you said this scarcity mindset that there's not enough out opportunities out there for you if if somebody else has it if somebody else is doing what you want to do 
but that's not the case at all. We talked about this last episode that, you know, depending on your inner circle, there's this comp competitive mindset that is built up within our society and it's ingrained in us that we should look a certain way, be a certain way, act a certain way. And yet it takes away from what you bring to the world that is authentically you, like your value, like what is your value for the world and those that you need to impact? If you're not being yourself, then you're not impacting the world in, in the way that you came here to do whatever, however you believe that is, your purpose is being denied. You're not walking in your truth and therefore your purpose is being denied. And that can, and you never know who you can impact. I've randomly have had people 10 years later tell me, hey, Amanda, I don't know if you know this, but you inspired me to like go after, you know, my modeling career or like quit my job and do something I really enjoyed. And I'm like, really? Yeah, I was like, well, you welcome, I guess. I, and I never knew that because I was taking that path of walking into myself and therefore it inspired someone else to do the same and find their joy. And when you're shining your light, it can be very difficult because there will be this um, battle that's happening between you and others around you, whether they're strangers or not strangers at all. There's gonna, you're going to be competing against something within them that they're not walking in their truth. Yes, and, and it can be difficult. I mean, you know me. You know I'm very stubborn. I'm incredibly stubborn. Girl, yesterday my back was hurting. I still went surfing, almost died, and then I went on a hike, and my, ba my back completely gave out. And, you know, and it's like, but these people are saying, like, um, it's kind of like, what's that saying? Uh take care of your body or it will make you rest. Like that's not the exact phrase, but it's kind of like, that's what's happening to me. Mm -hmm. like, I keep mm -hmm. It's time for change in my life. It's time for me to make a change, a shift, follow more of who I am. And because I keep fighting that so intensely, um, it's starting to manifest physically. And so not only are you not touching the people you're meant to touch. Yes. <laughs> My partner is watching, and he is, you know, I put him through, you know. <laughs> hey, stubborn people get stuff done. But anyway, um, so not only is it manifesting, or like I'm saying, you, you weren't touching the people that you didn't know you were touching, but it can start to manifest physically if you don't fall in line with your truth and your light and what you're meant to do. Um, and I always find that, I always find that so fascinating, right? Like, um I'm 33 years old, 27 to 32, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. and I have these issues with my body, but a lot of it is stress and anxiety from fighting who I truly am. That's just a fact. So yeah, uh. yeah. No, it's it's. Think about it, and and I had a reel about this. Think about if you're not tending to your roots of a tree or any type of fruit, anything you're trying to grow. Uh -huh. If you're not tending to the soil, the, the, the minerals and all the things that require for it to grow and you allow it to be infested with bugs, infested with bacteria, infested with anything that's going to cause damage, mm -hmm. your true, the, the tree is not going to be as strong or whatever you're growing. It's not going to be as strong, as prosperous, as you know shining its light and able to spread and expand until you allow yourself to look at those roots and get in there and really live your truth you will you will know you will always walk in this space of pain and manifesting like you said now manifesting ailments yeah. or manifesting arguments or anxiety and, and stress and depression and all these things. And of course, all that can also be linked to other things. And I'm not saying that and I'm not denying that. But if you're denying your truth and denying who you are, it deteriorates you internally. Oh, yeah. It really breaks you down and then it manifests into other pains and then other avenues of your life. And so thank you for sharing that now because it's, Again, very vulnerable to share those things. And I've been there too. And I have my moments as well. Everybody does. I, no yeah. one person, no, how, no matter how gorgeous they are or how much money they have, they have been through this. So you're not alone. And I, that's a great, you're never alone in thinking that 
either you're not enough or you're not shining your light or you're not being authentically yourself. There's a lot of people out there. A lot of people know how to fake it. They know how to put a smile on their face. Oh, yeah. They can put a smile on their face. And, and, but energetically, it was something fascinating I was talking about on this trip. Um, you really have to work on your energy to maintain your path. Because I get really annoyed because, you know, me sometimes I'm very analytical and I'll see certain patterns. I'm like, Amanda, why do I keep seeing this pattern? Is this something? What am I doing? Because I like to fix things. And I like things to, I don't know, I, I just pay attention and try to be very aware. And my friend was talking to me, we had this great conversation about it. She's like, well, energetically, we all have different wounds. So you've got mm -hmm. like wounds like, I'm not enough. Subconsciously, other people will feed on that energy. It doesn't even mean that they mean to be negative or intentional. It's all this subconscious thing is happening energetically. And if that's what you're putting out, um, the people will give that to you. So that's why it can be so hard because you're trying to find your light and be yourself, but you're still also healing those wounds and everybody has a different one. We all struggle with different things and you're trying to make headway, but then that keeps coming up. But you have to keep being like, but this is my light and I'm just going to kind of ignore it until mm -hmm. the, the pattern shifts. And that's what makes it difficult. So anybody that's watching, I, we're not saying that it's easy. Um, you know, you're, you're beating subconscious patterns that have been formed based on experiences you've had in your life. Um, but I believe everybody has something to offer the world and it's unique to them. And so it's really important to try to focus on that other than what's going on around you. Absolutely. I love that. I love that, you know, talking on your past experiences and habits that you we take on and a lot of it has to do with either fear or defense mechanisms that we've built up you know and unfortunately some of those can hinder our growth can hinder our truth can hinder us shining our light because we're sitting in that fear that if we do um i'll, I'll push people away or um I, I i won't be the most popular person or they may not like me energy Q, Q is life force and can be stagnant or over abundance from experiences. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, that's when it comes down to working with someone like myself or, or Janelle uh, with coaching, because we're really going, you're going to dive in, you're going to be aware of what are these habits and being honest with yourself and being vulnerable. And it's a very vulnerable place. It's not easy. We've both done it. And we're still going to go through it as we get older because we will change. Every experience is change us. Every experience that we go through changes us in some way, somehow. And we take that with us. And you can use it as a lesson or you can use it as, or it can be more of a punishment. Hey, Miguel. Hey, hey, hey. Um, it can be more of a punishment and like your own imprisonment. You can imprison yourself by uh, by not being you mm -hmm. you can call it's like living in a house with no windows and no doors and just being in this small room in darkness and having nowhere to move and nowhere to go and no sight that is terrifying to, at least and for me it's it's terrifying hey brandon it's terrifying and when you find your inner truth it, or, you know, what, shining your light and what that means for you, you will also attract all the things that you want in your life. People, opportunities, um, the joy, everything that you seek to, to have in your life, you will start attracting because you are walking your truth. And it, I wouldn't say a magnet because I'm not, I, I think, you know, when you think of a magnet, it's opposites attract, right? Oh. But if you think about a mirror, you're going to see, you'll be reflecting back what you put out. Oh, 100%. So, right. So if you're looking at the mirror and smiling, it's going to smile back at you. So think of it that way. However you're presenting yourself is what you're going to get back. And shining your light, let me tell you, it's, it, it can be a very, very difficult because, and I've talked about this before, it took me so long to find what my voice was. I didn't know for a really long time, and I thought I did. I was moving through life how I was expected to. You know, get the nine to five job, you know, do those things. You only have a limited amount of vacation, have a certain amount of friends. You should get married at a certain age, have kids at a certain retire, all these things. Like, oh, you should, could, would, you, you have to, like all the things. 
And then I had to sit down and that was part of the pandemic. And also when I quit my nine to five job was going, what do I want? Who am I? Because I don't feel like myself. Mm -hmm. I, and I didn't for a really long time. And I had to like break it down. I had to literally dig up all the things that I thought I was and, and also be honest, like, do I have this opinion about this certain topic or people and then reevaluating my life as well? Who's around me? Who's influencing my, uh, my choices and interactions? Because they did until I took responsibility for my choices. I, I was exert you know putting that out externally and blaming other people right yeah. and so and i it, love it that you were saying that so go ahead mm -hmm. oh yeah and it, it it comes down to boundaries too right like i like what you're saying you were just like i figured out who i was what i wanted how i felt and that was it and so it's like that also comes with walking your light and and that's what's what can be so hard is because you have to teach people how to treat you. And that's still something that I'm learning. And I would say I'm good at boundaries in regards to protecting people that are around me. But in regards to teaching people how to treat me personally, I am not so good at that. And that is something that I have to personally work on. Um, and, and it can be hard. But like I said, it's all a subconscious thing. So what I encourage everybody to do is it just comes down to mindfulness. So... I notice patterns and I'm like, okay, why does that keep happening? And it can be frustrating, but then it's like, okay, you have to, um, <laughs> oh, hey girl. Hey, same girl. Same. <laughs> <laughs> um, so funny. But it's, it's true. It's, um, you identify the patterns and it's also not shaming yourself. Like even today when I went to acupuncture, she's like, identify your feelings, process them. And, um, and then just figure out what shifts you want to make. Like you said, with the pandemic, you're like, okay, I don't like what I'm seeing over here. And life is a mirror and I have control. And so I really mm -hmm. love what you're talking about that. You do have control. And uh, the only way to fight the subconscious and find the mindfulness to know that you're in control is to seek out that mindfulness. Because, you know, for all those people out there, it's not your fault. It's not your fault whenever you become reactive. And it's a subconscious thing. But once you start to notice what you're doing, then you can take control of your life. You can tell people how you would like to be treated. You can tell yourself how you want to be treated. And then you can align more with who you are. Because sometimes, you know, me and Amanda, I'm like, am I just going to shut myself up against, away from everybody and not talk to anybody and become who I am? But you know, that's not how it works. You go, you, you're good, you're good. And you work on yourself. But then you get in a relationship. You have a new friendship. You got a new job. It's a new level. It's a new big ass mirror. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is why it's so important to have the tools to, to handle things that come up. And those things are, are part of your, I like to call them the essentials, but what is your morning routine, your afternoon routine, your you know, evening routine? Are you taking... Um, inventory of all, all that you're grat you know, grateful for? Are you taking inventory of your emotions? Are you taking inventory of everything that's going on in here? All of it from top to bottom, head to toe. Are you taking inventory, right? And that is part, is part of shining your light. You know, shining your light requires a lot, but once you get there, you won't ever regret it. And I love that, you know, you're bringing, you know, it, it's a sense of a part of healing. It's a part of you know, taking every situation for what it is and ex being open to opportunities. And it is okay to have a, a, a sad day, a difficult day, all these things is a part of it. Embrace those moments, embrace them, you know, rather than running from them, embrace them and learn how to navigate them, right? Because they're never going to completely go away until you're able to navigate them and have the tools to do so. And yeah. Oh, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it, and it, it's true. And, you know, it can be like shining your light is so inspiring. Mm -hmm. And, you you know, you wonder why you you look up to other people, right? Like, wow, I, I love that person. Oh, and there's something that's such amazing about this person. It's probably because they're shining their light and they'll be authentically themselves. They're mm -hmm. confident in who they are and they're not out here competing with anyone, anyone else because they are walking in their truth and they're not afraid to say what's on their mind and be who they are. Because guess what? 
what you are, I can't be. And what, like, what Nell is, I can never be. And I am absolutely okay with that. Mm -hmm. And that's what, when it comes down to appreciating everyone around you and being open to learning, you know, being open to learning. And then, like Nell said, when someone is trying to take your light from you or diminish your light, that's when you have to take a second and figure out and take control of how am I going to handle this? Mm -hmm. You can either walk away, you can speak your mind, you can just, it's up to you. But at the end of the day, you hold the control of how your light is going to be, how bright your light is going to shine. You do and no one else can ever dim your light. Yeah. And, and as I always say, I don't really think it's intentional when people do it. I always have this funny thing going on. When I notice it happens, I have this urge to make myself smaller, take care of the other person. So that's my personal thing that happens. But also, like, I don't really think people are out there to get you. Like, sometimes people don't even know. Um, oh, what is a healthy response when someone tries to dismiss it? I've been told by some energy healers, really send them love and light, which is kind of what I was just speaking to. Like, as I think, I don't think it's something that they're doing on purpose you know I genuinely love people and I think they mean well but I know what it's like to be reactive so if you walk in a room and you got something that another person wants to have their subconscious self is going to try to take the light mm -hmm. and so something that I'm working on is just recognizing that that's all it is and it's really like the five second rule like not being reactive not eating shit off the floor five second rule <laughs> Not in New York City. <laughs> Not even a second. You got to catch it midair. You got to catch it midair. You got to catch it inches away from the floor. But just being like, before you're like, oh, let me make myself smaller. Or, oh, that person's so mean. Or, oh, I better go away. Just be like, okay, what's really happening here? Okay, I feel some type of way about how they're being activated. Okay, it's probably not really about me. Sending them love. And I'm just going to exist and take up space because I'm allowed to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, that was fantastic. Don't eat shit off the floor, which is very true, especially in New York. No, no, uh, no. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, and I, I love, like, one of the things that I would say for, for me, because I've been in so many situations where I've felt personally attacked or belittled for being me or at a point where I was trying to be me, it hurt. It yeah. was very vulnerable for me to, and then... I didn't speak my mind and it, all it did was get worse, right? Because you're also allowing that behavior. So one of my suggestions is taking a moment for yourself and then finding um, a kind way of acknowledging it without <laughs> being disrespectful. Don't go to their level. Never go to their level. You either go above or not at all. That's it. Don't ever go to their level because once you do, it's hard to come back from it. All it does is diminishes, diminish your light, right? So if someone is, you know, dismissive, because I've been told before, like, you talk funny. Maybe it's just the way you grew up. And that hit so hard. That hit me in the heart so much because I am so proud of how I grew up and, like, my culture and my, and, and my family. But that, like, even thinking about it, like, I, it still resonates with me because it hits so much. It's like, how dare you talk about, like, my culture and where I've come from and dismiss it on a level where it's not acceptable, right? And as being Black and, and Puerto Rican, I'm constantly being judged for my appearance, for my accomplishments, all these things. And it really hit hard. And I had to take responsibility of like, all right, that's your opinion, but yeah. it's not mine. I know who I am. And the fact that you have to, that you feel the right to belittle someone else says more about you than it says about me. Yeah. So I would personally choose to walk away and go, yeah, sure, you got good for you. Like, or I would acknowledge something about them in a way that is like, oh, it's interesting that you feel such a, a certain way about me when you really don't know who I am. Yeah. You don't know my story. So it's interesting. And like, also, you don't know what they're going through. They could be attacking you because they're being attacked by somebody else. So yeah. they have to let it out on you. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, is, any, is everything okay? Because I'm just trying to be kind and spread love and light. But if you don't want that, then that's okay. I'm going to choose to walk away. That's fine. This space is not for me. 
And I've learned to walk away from a lot of situations. And that comes with practice. Like, be okay with walking away. Be okay with walking away. Yeah, and then I guess the positive flip to that story is you're talking about how, like I was saying earlier, like energetically we all have our separate wounds or whatever. And so that person felt that from your past and they brought it up, but then you were able to take control and um, uh, you are able to take control and flip it and be like, okay. And then I'm sure that's happening less and less. And I really believe not only because the truth of the matter is you speak beautifully and you're a beautiful human and everything you have to offer others is amazing. Then also because you're healing that yourself and you're standing up and setting that boundary, people aren't saying it to you as much anymore. And I think that's really cool. And so it's annoying it had to come up the mirror, but you defeated that. And I think that's really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's something that I really had to learn. Uh, and, and not necessarily be okay with it, but let it go. Like I said, you know, let it go because it's more of a reflection on them than it is of you. And a lot of what people say is their internal work that they need to, to work on. They're whatever that's going on internally for them. And uh, in order, you know, hurt people like to hurt people. That's just okay. a matter of fact. Right. Hurt people hurt people. That's, that's just, it is what, you know, that is a matter of fact. But people who love also like to love people. And, you know what I mean? So spread the love and it becomes a domino effect. But thank you. It was a lesson that I had to learn. And because of it, I, I speak my mind and I'm firm on what I say, but I'm also open to, to knowledge, yeah. you know, o- always open to knowledge. And I will look more for information. So, yeah. So tell me more about that. Why do you feel a certain way about mm-hmm. that? Like, what is, the, what is surrounding that topic that came up, right? You, you know, you can allow yourself to dig a little bit so that you can know where the where it's rooted in because then when you do you realize that has nothing to do with you yes nothing and then you learn not to waste energy on that anymore because you then after you know you've done it a thousand times you're like okay well it's good to know where it's coming from so it's like i love it it's like all learning experience and that's a that's a great thing to tell people you know like okay yeah see that's that's but that's your story and that's that's the thing you know, a part of your inner light and share and shining your light wherever you go is your story. All that you have been through up into that particular moment, whatever situation you're dealing with, is your stories and what they've taught you and what they've brought to light and what you're reflecting in the world. That is your story. And, you know, who you are is so unique and so valuable and such a gift. Don't let anyone diminish your light don't let anyone diminish their your light encourage them to, to, to shine theirs but don't let anyone diminish your light because someone's opinion of you does not have to be a reality and i live by that to this day right i love yeah, that any, yeah right uh so any final and i know we're getting closer in time and you're on in mexico yeah i gotta go grab any, dinner girl coconut yes. ceviche and guacamole i gotta i gotta run Okay, drooling, drooling. <laughs> um, but yes, you know, any final words when you when thinking of shining your light, regardless what uh, what other people think. I just know from personal experience that the more you heal yourself, the more you become in tune. You just you can't you just can't do it anymore, and it actually becomes painful. Like I'm literally in physical pain now because I'm fighting um, who I am. And so I don't want that for other people. I want you to feel safe, know that you can have conversations. And, um, and then eventually you do learn. It's more about the other person. And it's like, it's, it's better for you and for the world that you are yourself. And um, I think that's what's so wonderful about life, right? We all have something to add and uh, we're all connected. And, and I think it's really lovely when everyone's being themselves. Absolutely. I love that. Everyone, it's very lovely for, you know, when everyone is really being themselves, especially in a world full of chaos and unpredictability, the, what you have to rely on is who you are because you will wake up with that every single day. And if you look in the mirror and you're not happy with what you see, mm-hmm. take the time to find out why 
and then heal and allow yourself to look at a mirror and be proud of who you are, your story, and everything that you've gone through, no matter where you've come from, it is who you are and it is full of love and appreciation. What are your thoughts about this episode? Drop it in the comments and let us know what you want to dive into next. Subscribe, like, share, and click the link below to book a free consultation. And we'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. time.